Even in death, John McAfee remains to be the same fascinating character that he's been since the beginning of his career, which he claimed was at Missouri Pacific Railroad with a fake resume in 1969, where he was routing trains with an IBM computer while tripping on LSD every day. He said that his mind was shattered after overdosing on DMT and watching the computer spitting out train schedules to the moon. And that part of him believes he's still on that trip and that one day he'll find himself back on his couch in St. Louis listening to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And this is a very strange tale to tell because during this time, McAfee was employed by NASA working as a programmer for the Apollo moon mission. After a decade of computer programming, McAfee worked as a software consultant. And while employed by Lockheed, he received a copy of the first computer virus, Brain, and developed cybersecurity software, which would soon lead to McAfee. In just a few years, McAfee grew into the largest antivirus company in the world. And in 1994, John McAfee suddenly stepped down as CEO and sold all of his shares for $100 million. Shares to a company that would be sold 16 years later for $7.7 .7 billion. After suffering the 2008 crash, McAfee's $100 million was down to four. He then went to Belize in 2009, built a jungle laboratory, and began producing a natural antibiotic made from a local plant. The local government attempted to shake him down for $2 million, and he denied them. A week later, the country's elite gang suppression unit, trained by the FBI, raided McAfee's jungle lab and killed his dog. You killed my fucking dog. McAfee responded by hiring prostitutes, training them to be spies, and delivering spyware to high-ranking members of the Belize government, which gave McAfee incriminating evidence on them. I did find out that the Minister of National Defense was the largest drug trafficker in all of Central America, and the Minister of Immigration the largest human trafficker. After this, McAfee's remaining dogs were poisoned. His neighbor was killed, and he was blamed for it. He evades arrest and returns to America, where he begins to get heavily involved in libertarian politics, railing against big banks, supporting decentralized cryptocurrency, and warning people of Silicon Valley and big government tyranny. In 2019, after the IRS convened a grand jury to charge McAfee, he fled the country, operating from Cuba and from his boat in the Bahamas. He launched a crypto coin called WACT, and to promote it, he used an image of Hillary Clinton smiling upon a freshly suicided Jeffrey Epstein while holding a slice of pizza, a la Pizzagate. He made it clear that he feared for his life, and he made it clear that he was not suicidal. He claimed that one of his body doubles was poisoned. One of my body doubles, one of my many body doubles, disappeared 11 days ago. He reappeared today in the hospital with no recollection of what had happened to him. And that the CIA was working with the Bahamian government to go after him. He threatened to expose them and announced that he had over 31 terabytes of incriminating data. He tweeted that a person in England is one of many who has copies of this incriminating data. Someone with the Twitter handle at Britbong Log Post whose account was then suspended and who messaged McAfee about being under surveillance ever since the tweet. On October 5th of 2020, the SEC charges McAfee for allegedly making false and misleading cryptocurrency recommendations, while Elon Musk can carry on like it's the wild, wild west. The following day, McAfee was arrested at Barcelona Airport to be extradited to the United States. But before that happens, he dies in police custody. A day later, a post appears on BritBongLogPost.com that says, contingency plan activated, something big is coming, with a link to McAfee's whacked crypto 
and the mysterious countdown timer that ends on July 27th. While some suggest this might have something to do with McAfee's 31 terabytes of incriminating data, others claim it's nothing more than a scam for someone to make money. Much of the story comes from McAfee himself, and we don't know if it's true. With McAfee, it's hard to know what to believe. But what we do know for certain is that all of our individual freedom is in grave danger. The de facto puppet president tells American citizens that resistance is futile, uses the NSA to spy on the most popular television journalist of all time, and opens the borders, giving away the hard-earned wealth earned by millions of law-abiding citizens who believed in their country. What we know for certain is that if good men continue to do nothing, then America will soon fall, and the spirit of individual freedom will forever be erased from history. For InfoWars.com, this is Greg Reese.